Thank you for tuning in to TTV. I'm your host, Toya, and today is Wisdom Wednesday. And we are going to continue our journey with the Tao Te Ching. Um, this is the book I'm using. There's many versions out there. So, you know, check into it if you want to look more into this to find a version that works and relates to you. Now, what the Tao Te Ching is, and I know I say in Tao and you see a T, um, but it is pronounced with a D. But it's a book of old wise um, Chinese proverbs. So it's like 81 or 82 verses. Uh, I don't remember. But it's been around since about 2500 BC, BC, BCE, whatever they go by now. Um, so basically roughly almost 5,000 years old. Okay. Um, but that's what it is. And what's always funny to me is how relevant this is even today. So you got like 4,500 years later, because yeah, almost five, 4,500 years later, this stuff is still relevant. This stuff still happens. It still takes place. So yeah. So we're going to continue on. We're on verse 18, which is the paradoxes of abandoning the great integrity. And what this book means when it starts to say the great integrity, it's like if you are um, whether what you would call God or your Jehovah, Yahweh, um, Allah, the spirit, the source, in it, whatever, those names, whatever name you would give to that, that entity is what they call the great integrity. So let's get into it. All right. So verse 18 says the paradoxes of abandoning the great integrity. So when the great integrity was abandoned, humanity and justice appeared. When knowledge and teachers appeared, hypocrisy was their inevitable accompaniment. When family relations lost their harmony, female pity, pite, which I'm going to define in a minute, um, and parental affections were suddenly birthed. Uh, when a nation succumbed to the chaos and corruptions, patriotic politicians are always at hand announcing themselves. Y'all, you see what I mean? You see, this applies for even today. So it says, when a great integrity was abandoned, humanity and justice appeared. Okay, so if everybody is living with integrity and everybody is living by the rules that, you know, that your religion or whatever your belief is, whether it's God, source, spirit, Yahweh, Allah, whatever. If you were actually, if everybody was living by those means and going by their means, it wouldn't be a need for the word humanity or for the action of humanity. It wouldn't be a need for justice because you would be acting out of the great integrity. So... When you abandon the great integrity or you abandon source, God, whatever, however you want to name it, when you abandon that, then these things have to be created to give people an ideal on what it is that they, they should be doing to give them some kind of guideline. OK, so that's what I believe mean, is what they mean when they say the great integrity is abandoned. Humanity and justice will appear because you have to have some kind of order. There has to be some kind of balance. So that's that's the whole abandonment is the reason it was even created. When knowledge and teachers appeared, hypocrisy was their inevitable accompaniment. So whenever you have teachers and there's knowledge and all of that comes, you're going to have people who think they know everything and who's going to be opposed and feel their feelings going to get hurt because they feel like they're less of a person because they don't hold that same knowledge or that hold that same title of teacher as you hold. So you're going to get those haters. <laughs> and that's what I think that one means. And then when family relations lost their harmony, female pite <laughs> and parental affections were suddenly birthed. Okay, so I actually had to stop um, because I did glance ahead on this. I don't usually read them ahead of time. I wait for you guys, but this is like my third or fourth take. So I had to stop and look up what this female pite means, okay? And it's F-I-L-I-A-L and then P-I-E-T-Y. And so when I looked it up, it says in Confucianism, it the important virtue and primary duty of respect, obedience, and care for one's parents and elderly family mem members. So that's what, um, who is this? Dictionary.com is stating that that's what it means. So it's part of Confucianism, um, which is a whole philosophy in itself that I'm not getting into. <laughs> but it, it says the important virtue and primary duty of respect, obedience, and care. For one's parents and elderly family members. So it says when family relationships lost their harmony, then that respect, obedience, and care for your parents and your elderlies, as well as parental affections, were suddenly birthed. 
Because if you're living by the integrity and you have, you know, your elders and your parents, you're going to treat them a certain way if you're within the integrity, okay? If you're working or walking in God's feet, Yahweh feet, whoever name you call it. If you're walking as that person, then there's no need to distinguish anything because you're automatically going to show respect. You're automatically going to give love. You're automatically going to take care of your parents and respect them and treat them right and take care of them when they get older. And you're in elder, elders, in, not only in your household, but in the ones around you as well. So when you um, remove that, now we have to define it. Now we have to tell you what it is that you should be doing for your parents, what it is you should be doing for your, for the elders, you know, and please take care of the elders in your family, you know, instead of it just being something that was automatically done. So that's what that means to me. And it says when a nation succumbs to chaos and corruptions, patriotic politicians are always at hand announcing themselves. And I would say that is true. We see this more and more during election time. All of a sudden, these people who didn't vote for anything that has to do with you and didn't care about nothing that had to do with you and, you know, always putting you down and doing all this. So that'd be a, a political year with somebody getting um, where it's a new vote and a new office that's going to be taken care of. All of a sudden, they love everybody. They want to fight for everybody. They got everybody best interests at hand. They won't do whatever it takes for you to vote for me, Right. So that's what I think that means um, as far as what they're talking about with that. Because then all of a sudden, we are patriotic. We are, you know, um, Americans. We are, you know, part of the United States citizens. You know, we are part of, in my case, Michigan or Detroit. You know, all of a sudden, it's all that patriotism, you know, for where you are. Before, they ain't care nothing about you. They ain't say nothing about you, especially governors. Oh, they don't care nothing about Flint, <laughs> Saginaw, or Detroit until it's election time. Then all of a sudden, it's like, well, we care about what happens in Saginaw, Flint, and Detroit. But beforehand, they don't care anything about it. And I think that's what that verse is saying. I'm sure y'all heard that. <laughs> um, the slightest little thing. I think Jacob was knocking around. My son was rocking, knocking around in his room. But anyway, um, but that's what I believe that verse means and what they're talking about in there. So feel free to leave a comment below because I would love to know what you think, what you got out of this. And if you got something out of this content, then please like, share, and subscribe because if you got something, then chances are someone else has to or will as well. So I love you guys and I'll talk to you tomorrow.